Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. Tonight, I wanted to talk about the 10 ox herding pictures. And maybe we won't get through all 10 of them in one shot, which is fine. The 10 ox herding pictures, um, I wish I could share what these pictures look like, but unfortunately I can't. So they originated in the 12th century in China. And they're, they're often thought of as an allegory for our quest for enlightenment. And I can get with that. It's a path. It's a, so we think, means to an end. We don't know necessarily what that end is, but when we start out in picture one, searching for the ox, we've maybe been exposed a little bit to Buddhism in general, maybe Zen, maybe we're intrigued by Zen because it resonates with us. Maybe we're intrigued by Zen because it somehow makes sense. Maybe we're intrigued by Zen because it makes absolutely no sense. And none of those are actually wrong. And they are what they are when we start our practice. So the idea is in the first ox herding picture. There's a boy and he's standing on the edge of a forest. And he's looking for something. He figures it's an ox. And he figures that if he finds this ox, then everything will be taken care of. The first question I have is, who is actually lost? Is it the boy or is it the ox? The ox is right where it is. The boy is the one who thinks being somewhere else, finding this ox, bouncing around because of his karma, sounds more lost to me than the ox. But regardless, the boy is searching for it. He thinks he and the ox are separate. He'll find out otherwise later. He thinks that he can go into this forest and find the ox and that is gonna nail it for him. There's an old uh, Kong An. The master asks, Nanquan Puyan, what is the way? Nanquan said, ordinary mind is the way. The master said, then may I direct myself towards it or not? And Nanquan said, to seek it is to deviate from it or move further away from it. The master said, if I do not seek, how can I know about the way? Nan Kwan said, the way does not belong to knowing or not knowing. To know is to have a concept. To not know is to be ignorant. If you tr truly realize the way of no doubt, it is just like the sky, wide open, vast emptiness. How can you say yes or no to it? At these words, the master had sudden enlightenment. His mind became clearer like the moon. The master in this case being uh, Zhao Zhou. So we go on our way thinking that we need to move from where we are in our practice and we need to do all these things 
And in reality, while we're moving and we're doing these things and we're bouncing around because of our karma, we're actually not anywhere closer to what we hope for than we were when we started, when we were perfectly still. So this, the second ox herding picture is uh, called seeing the traces or finding the footprints. And that's basically the boy standing on the edge of the forest and seeing the uh, traces of the ox's hooves, some sort of thing that signifies he's been there, something has been there. And this is at the point where we've maybe been practicing for a little bit and we've maybe read a sutra or two or started working on some kongans or whatever, but we've had that teaser. We've seen the trace of Zen. We've seen the trace of practice. Seeing the traces also means that we have a faith that, okay, this is going to be helpful. We can start to sort of figure out what it is that all this Zen is about. We're still thinking, 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 thinking. And that's okay. Zen Master Sung San uh, said, don't throw out the manure of thinking. Plow it under and use it to make beautiful flowers. So the first two pictures are concerned with the worlds of karma, us bouncing around, us thinking that we need to find this thing. And we're getting there. The third picture is catching a glimpse of the ox, actually seeing the ox off in the distance. The boy kind of finds his way around using his sense faculties and he's not necessarily misguided by them. He's, he's present in his search. He has faith in his path. He has faith in the great way. He's gotten a test taste of Zen. He still is, you know, I want to find the ox. I want to get enlightenment. I want to have this and that and the other thing. And again, that's his karma talking. But at least he's like, okay, this Zen thing seems like it's going to be the way that I can accomplish what it is that I want to accomplish. And the fourth picture, and that's probably where we're going to stop tonight, is called uh, Catching the Ox. The boy comes in contact with the ox. Everybody wants to capture this ox, and he has actually come in contact with it. We've all got distractions that keep us from keeping a tight leash on the ox. That's why we practice, 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 practice. That's us keeping that rein taut, that, that hook through the nose, the, the loop through the nose with the reins attached. We want to hang on to that and keep our practice dedicated. If we, you know, loosen up too much, then 
we only have to go back and, and take hold of the rain again and start our difficult practice, our hard practice, not difficult, just really diligent practice. There's danger that if we immerse ourselves too quickly or too deeply or think we're deeper than we actually are, that this can overpower us. When I was first uh, starting my practice, uh, there was a, I don't know, week long retreat, I guess that was coming up and I'd been practicing for, you know, a couple of months, probably at this point, not very long. And I figured, ah, well, cool. I'm going to go sit in a retreat for a week straight, not really knowing what that entailed per se, just, you know, sort of secondhand rumors and, you know, descriptions. And I was advised against that because I probably would have melted down as, uh, as it turns out. Um, intensive retreats are just that, they're intensive. So we don't want to grab too tight. We don't want to grab too loose. We want to have just that right amount of tension so that the ox, our practice, is right sized for where we are in our own path on the great way. So again, I ask you, where is this ox anyway? 